Yeah, um, my name is Pat Shaughnessy. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks a lot for the opportunity, you guys. Uh, I've only got 10 minutes, so real quick, two seconds about me. I write a blog, I'm on Twitter, and I work at McKinsey & Company, which is a management consulting firm. I'm here today, today to talk about why hashes will be faster in Ruby 2.0. So all you guys are Ruby developers, so you know how to use hashes and what hashes are. So I'm not, I'm not going to go into this at all. You create an empty hash, you stick a key and a value in, Later, when you put the key, uh, when you want the value back, you just provide the key and Ruby finds it for you. Um, instead, today, I want to talk about how hashes are implemented internally. You know, what goes on inside of Ruby when you use a hash. Um, so, so what I want to do is put the hash object under a microscope, so to speak, and take a close look at it. And like with a real microscope, the closer you look at something, you start to see things that you never even knew were there. And some really still cool stuff going on with hashes. Um, the coolest thing about hashes I discovered recently was how fast they are. I never knew this, but if you, if you actually measure how long it takes to get an element out of a hash, it's amazing. On the left, I have a hash of size 1, and then I measure going up to 100, 10,000, up to a million elements in a hash. It took just microseconds to get an element out of a hash, um, no matter which element I looked for. So it's like a mini search engine that's built into the Ruby language somehow. You know, it's amazing. How does Ruby do this? It's sort of like a miracle if you think about it. Um, so we're going to look at that now. Um, Ruby, like most programming languages, uses something called a hash table to implement hash objects. So what is a hash table? It's really just a collection of bins or buckets. So I'm showing those along the top, uh, 0 to 10. Ruby initially uses 11 bins to save values in a hash. Um, and it saves the key and the values that you give it in something called an ST table entry structure. Um, we don't have time to go into the C level programming details today, um, but just suffice to say that it saves the key and the value in some kind of a memory structure. And then the way a hash table works is it saves uh, or assigns each entry to one of the bins, in this case, bin number three. Um, how does Ruby decide to, to put it under bin number three? Well, it uses something called a hash function. A hash function is really just an arbitrary mathematical formula of some kind that takes any value and returns an integer. Um, you can try this out yourself if you run an IRB and just take any Ruby value or object and run dot hash on it. Um, you'll get uh, some big number back, and that's a hash number or a hash value. Uh, you'll get a sense of what they are. They look like they're random numbers, but actually they're not random at all because when you call the same, uh, when you provide the same value to the hash function and call it again, you always get the same value back. Um, what Ruby does with that is it divides it by 11 and gets the remainder. In other words, it calculates the modulus by 11, which is the number of those bins or buckets in the hash table. And what it does with that is it uses that as the bin index or to figure out which uh, bucket to put that entry under. And that's the basis of the hash table algorithm. So for example, in this one, I saved a key value pair in a hash. Ruby took the key, ran it through the hash function, got a big random looking number back, divided it by 11, and took the remainder, and the answer was 3. You know, if I add another entry, the answer in this case might be 7. If I add a third one, it might come out to be 1. So the idea of a hash function also is it should return numbers that are evenly distributed. So if you start dividing and distributing the entries across the hash table, they'll be evenly distributed. Um, it could be that some entries are, are repeat. So you know, in this one, the fourth one, it might come out that I get the same answer, three. And that's OK, because these, um, these bins are actually just linked lists. So along the top, there actually are 11 pointers to the first entry. And then each entry structure has a next pointer in it, which points to the next one. So they're each linked lists. Um, and as I add more and more entries, I might add 20 or 30 entries to a hash, these linked lists just get to be a little bit longer. So you know, why do all this? Why does Ruby go through all this trouble to create a hash table, pointers, bins, buckets, entries? What's the point of all this? The point is to make hashes fast. So I've got 30 or 40 entries here. If I go back to Ruby and say, here's my key, give me the value, all Ruby has to do is, again, take the key, run it through the same hash function, It'll get the same big number back. The function has to always be consistent. And then when it divides by 11 and gets the remainder, it'll get, oh, it's un under bin number 5. So Ruby doesn't have to iterate through all of these 30 or 40 entries. It just goes to bin 5 and says, oh, there's only three here. I'll loop through these three and find the one that I need. Um, another cool thing about hash tables is as you add more and more entries to the table, they automatically expand um, to accommodate or to make more space for those entries. It's really cool. Um, and you, know, you could put thousands and thousands of millions of entries in a hash, and they'll just keep growing and growing and fit them in. What Ruby does is it keeps that density or average number of entries per bucket to be five or less. That's the way the algorithm works. Um, so hashes in Ruby 2.0.
This is how hashes worked already. What's cool about Ruby 2.0? Why are they going to be even faster? And what was the Ruby core team able to do to make this even better than it already is? Um, well, what they did is they looked closely at the insertion process. What happens when I insert something into a hash for the first time? Um, and the slowest step or part of that process is actually called um, calling the malloc function. So some of you might also be C programmers, and you'll know that malloc is how you get memory back from the operating system. You can say to Linux or whatever OS you're using, I need 200 bytes, um, give me some memory, and it returns a pointer to you. Um, so Ruby needs to do this each time you save an element into a hash in order to save the key, the value, and a couple other things. And this actually, relatively speaking, can be slow. It can be a slow operation for the OS to go and find this memory for you, make sure it's aligned, and give you the pointer and all that stuff. So what they've done in Ruby 2.0 is they've just decided, you know what, we're not going to call malloc at all. That'll speed things up. And you know what, we're not going to even use these, um, these entry structures the way that we were before either. We're, what we're going to do instead is let's just save the keys and values right in that, uh, that array that we had on the top. So it turns out in the same memory space that it took to, to save 11 pointers, you can save six key value pairs. And in this way, the Ruby team was able to speed things up even more. So very cool stuff. The, the Ruby core team is um, super smart. There's a lot of cool things going on in Ruby 2.0 this year. Um, I won't have time to talk about any more of it. But wait a second. If you think about this for a minute, something as odd is going on here, which is um, this is not a hash anymore. You know, there's no hash table. There are no bins. There's no entries. There's no linked lists. It's not a hash. When you use hashes in Ruby 2.0, when you upgrade to 2.0 sometime, maybe next year, your hashes will not be hashes anymore. They'll actually just be arrays, at least up to six elements. Because again, those six elements are all that fit in that, in that memory. Really interesting. And it's going to be just totally transparent to you. You won't even know that this is going on. Um, so, so what? How does this change my life as a Ruby developer? How fast is this really going to be? Who really cares about this stuff? Um, and by the way, for me, it's not about performance. For me, it's just a lot of fun looking into Ruby internals and seeing how this stuff works. I think it's fascinating and just super cool. Um, but if you measure the performance, what, uh, what this chart is is for hashes of different sizes again. On the left, I have an empty hash with nothing in it, then a hash with one thing in it, a hash with two things. At this measure, this, these bars show you how long it takes to insert one more element into those hashes. So on the left, it's really cool. You can see that in Ruby 2.0, the, inserting the first few elements is now faster than it was. Um, one curious thing is there's a spike for um, number six, and that's because you can only fit six key value pairs in that space of 11 pointers. So when Ruby inserts the seventh one, it has to switch back to the old algorithm and say, oh, I need the hash table again, and actually needs to allocate seven structures all at the same time. So there's a, actually a, a memory performance penalty there. Um, anyway, what I decided to do was, since I thought active record objects really are hashes, um, let me just create 10,000 database records and load them all into memory. And what I'll do is I'll make sure that database table has maybe six columns or fewer, just to see if I can uh, measure the optimization. And I found that, yeah, it's 6% faster doing that. Again, because you're o over and over again creating hashes. But that's kind of contrived. You know, I thought, well, how many times are you ever going to load 10,000 records into memory all at once? Not a good idea. So then I just created a Rails app. I ran the scaffolding generator. Uh, and I took one of the specs that came out of the generator. Uh, and I just started, I put that in a loop and measured for the Ruby execution time only, how much faster was it. And I found that it was over 2.5% faster. Pretty cool. Um, here's the spec that I used. This is just you know, the person index page. Um, and I thought to myself, how is that possible? How can I measure um, a performance improvement here? I'm only using, like, what? How many hashes can you see in this code? Maybe five? I don't know. There's the attributes hash I'm giving to the new model. There's a session hash. There's another empty hash here, which is the request parameters. Maybe the assigns thing is a hash as well. So of the five, five hashes, well, don't forget, Rails itself uses a lot of hashes internally, too. And all of you use hashes for lots of things. This is a common pattern for when you're passing options into a method call, to use a hash. But when I measured it, I actually added some code in C to Ruby and counted how many hashes were created. There were 409 hashes created. When I ran these three lines of code once, 409 hashes were created. How is this possible? Well, not only Rails itself uses, uses hashes for everything uh, commonly, but Ruby itself, inside the language, uses hashes for a variety of different things, like keeping track of which methods are in which classes, and which modules are used in which classes. 
Anyway, I think this stuff is really cool. Um, I'm actually writing a book this uh, summer called Ruby Under a Microscope. If you're into Ruby internals, you want to learn more about what's actually happening inside the language, um, go check it out. It's on my website. That's it. I guess I uh, have no more time today. Thanks a lot. Thank you.